throughout our lives, we've heard phrases like, Now, wait a minute, take it easy now, go ahead. Huh? Go ahead and back up. And, If you're going hard enough left, you'll find yourself turning right. And much like those in disc golf, if you want to learn how to throw fast, you got to know how to stop. Let's get into it. Spin it. Hey DMD family, welcome back to another Discs MD video. Bunky here and I just got back from 2024 Worlds in Lynchburg, Virginia. <sighs> Had to been one of the greatest disc golf experiences of my life. If you've never been to a pro event, I highly, highly recommend it. What a dream place to be for disc golf. Uh, seeing pros throw, talking to pros, uh, I ran into a ton of content creators. I, I got to meet the foundation guys face to face and talk to them a little bit. Um, I, I played an event with Jason who works for them, but uh, I got to meet the, the big three. I got to see, of course, uh, overthrow guys again, um, Josh and Mikey and Dakota. I ran into Swanky Disc Golf, got to talk to him. Ran into Robbie C, got to talk to him. Ran into Daryl Wood from Simply, uh, Simply Incredible Disc Golf. I always, I, I always want to say simply irresistible, and it is simply irresistible, but it's also simply incredible. Um, so I, I got to, I ran into Joe Phillips from another round. Uh, so many content creators, it's such just a fabulous, fabulous experience. So ever get the opportunity, go do it. So this is going to be hopefully a, a shorter tutorial video, as short as I can be. I'm really long-winded. But a couple of lessons ago, Josh and I uh, worked on my bracing. So we're going to talk about that again. And I know everybody's like, oh, another video on bracing. But this is a side of bracing that I don't think people really think about. And let me get this out of the way. Because when we talk about bracing, and let me adjust my camera here real quick. So when we talk about bracing, everybody thinks about this. Right? This foot being planted, our weight being shifted into our front leg and pushing through the ground uh, to stop our forward momentum, right? From our, from our, our plant leg. For left-handers, it's our left leg. For you right-handers, it's your right leg. And when we talk about bracing, it, the focus is that front leg. But there's more to bracing than that. And, and I really haven't thought about it before my lesson with Josh, it may have been three months ago now, we neglect the rest of the bracing that needs to happen. So what happens in a disc golf throw? What is the goal? The goal is to create energy with our body that transfers to the disc to create speed, right? Disc speed. That's what we want. Uh, when we're talking about distance, when we're talking about the backhand throws, yes, accuracy is important, spin is important, but distance is important too, and speed of the disc is important. We want to get the disc up to speed. So how do we do that? Create energy. Transfer the energy to the disc. How does that transfer happen? It happens with bracing. It happens with stopping our momentum, which is why I say if you want to throw fast, you have to learn how to stop, right? We create momentum with our body, energy with our body that builds up. How do we transfer it into disc? We stop our momentum. Starts with the ground and works upwards. And we stop every facet of our throw until the last thing moving is our arm and snapping the disc out to the hit. That's what transfers the energy from our bodies to the disc. Stopping. So it's not just our front leg that we have to stop. It's not just necessarily even our momentum that we have to spot stop. It's the whole motion that we eventually have to stop to get to this point. The basis for our throw, the, the foundation, right? I used to be a contractor and I used to do a lot of building. The foundation is the most important part of a structure. So what is our foundation when it comes to a backhand throw? Our legs. And again, we concentrate on our front leg, but we have two legs that we have to worry about and we have to learn how to stop both of them. So here is me pre that lesson with Josh and what my foundation looked like. And, and, 
and I'll and I'll throw it and then I'll do a freeze frame of what what I want us to focus on. Okay, so now what I want us to focus on is this shot. You see my front leg into the ground, straight, bracing against it. What is my back leg doing? Yeah, it's coming up and around. And, and I remember this very clearly when I reached out to uh, Robbie C's coach. His name is escaping my mind. I'll drop it here <laughs> when I look it up. The first thing he said to me was, if we work on you, we're going to have to stop that leg kicking forward. And he never really explained why. And now I know why. Because we have to learn how to brace not only the front part of our lower half, but the back part of our lower half. And I think Trebuchet talks about this some, and Nick Crush talks about this some, and I'm fairly certain uh, Clint from It's Blitz talks about this, and then Josh talked to me about it. Really, what are we doing with this back leg when we're bracing for our throw? And you'll see two typical scenarios. One is the one I just showed you, and the other one looks something like this. Where you, people, you see people swing that leg around like that, right? Well, what is happening when we do this? What is happening when I let my leg come up like this, and when other people let their leg swing around like this? You're bleeding energy. You're releasing the energy out into the space and not into the disc. You're not driving that energy up into to be utilized by your arm. Right? We need to learn how to brace our lower half completely to send all the lower half energy up into our upper half, into our arm, and get it into the disc. So what does that look like? And I'm going to use the slow motion throw from Simon Lazat. It looks something like this. Now, hopefully, I, I'm going to try to do this and do a side-by-side -side comparison of what I look like and what Simon looks like. Do you see the difference in our lower halves? Mine is collapsed, and I almost always collapsed my back leg into my front leg when I threw. Even if I wasn't coming up like this, I was collapsing my back leg into my front leg, which is what the cue that Josh had for me in my collapsing of my brace. And Simon, when he's throwing, has an A-frame in his legs. He stops not only his front leg, his momentum forward, but he stops his back leg in bleeding energy by rotating the body too soon. So we need to learn how to stop the back half and not allow it to collapse forward and not allow it to spin out, but use the brace to drive the energy to the disc. So how do we do that? Now, I, I think the easiest way, and Trebuchet does this, and Nick Crush does this, uh, and probably Clint too, I'm gonna reference them a lot. They tend to hit on things very similar to the way I hit on things. Uh, progressions is one. I know Nick and Clint both do progression work, and I've done progression work my entire sports career. So I think we think very similarly, but in different ways. But single leg, standstills, I think are the key to learning how to stop the back half. Because when we're throwing from a standstill position, right, we have momentum going in a certain direction. And unless we want to fall over, we have to counteract that momentum with something else, right? So if I were here and just threw, right, I'm going to, and, and just let my body go, I'm going to fall forward. Right? And if I throw hard, like Clint and Nick, I, I can't throw nearly as fast as them, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to fall on my face. What we need to do is counteract that with something else. And that something else is our back half. So when I'm doing one-legged standstills, the counteract, the counterbalance, and Trebuchet talks about this a little in some of his one-legged form work um, tutorials, uh, is this leg here. Right? And it's almost kicking back and out as we throw, right? To stop us from flying forward. Well, that in essence is the brace. The way I would start is with this, just one-legged standstill 
throws into your net, right? And I'm not really worried about my upper half here. All I'm worried about is bracing my lower half, right? Little bent at the knee, nose over toes, backside out a little bit. Go back into your throw and throw. And kick that leg down and back to counter out, counterbalance you from flying forward. So that's step number one. Step number two is actually moving forward, right? Again, it's a progression. I'm not going to do go right from standstills to full walk up, but also standstills with two legs doesn't do me much of anything because I don't have the forward momentum either, right? So when, when I put both feet on the ground, I want to establish forward momentum to have my body learn what it's like to stop the back half of that, that momentum. So my second tip in the progression, and that first progression, it's going to take a while, y'all. Remember, these progressions aren't make 10 throws and then move on to step two. It's day after day coming out and making sure that your body is feeling stopping your lower half, okay? And then step number two is Nick Crush calls them baseball, one step throws, uh, and he just goes from there. I like to, be, and it's a mental thing with me, I like to do the one steps, but start with the cross step, right? Cross step, right? And then did you see what happened there? I kept this leg back and out as I was throwing, and that comes from my body getting the cue from the one-legged drill that this back leg has to stop. It can't collapse and it can't spin around. The one-leg drills then transfers over to these X-step drills. And that leg now stays back and out, similar to the way Simon is throwing, right? And it is a conscious thing. When I do that X-step throw, when I throw, I have to make sure that my leg doesn't collapse up next to my front leg or it doesn't spin around. I go into that X step throw, throw and make sure that this leg is braced as well as my front leg is braced. So the entire lower half of me stops to transfer the leg power and the momentum up into my upper body to get the energy where it needs to go, the disc. Well, there you have it. That's it for this video. I, I hope this really uh, helps some people out. I, I know, again, if I struggle with things, I know there are other people that are struggling with the same things. So set up the tripod, videotape yourself, see what your lower half is doing. And if you are doing these collapsing moves that I do and so many of us do, and learn how to stop the entirety of your lower half in your brace to transfer that speed to the disc. As always, thanks for your support and thanks for watching. I can't do this without you all. And I, I'm, I'm really thankful for everyone who encourages me along the way. I met a, a, several people that knew me at Worlds in, in Lynchburg, which just blows my mind. And that, that, really, that really humbles me and makes me very excited. <laughs> so I'm glad to, to have the opportunity to do this. But until next time, enjoy the journey. And here's your burst of the day.